Uh, diary, hello, it's uh, the middle of October 2019 uh, and this is another video to tell you what I've done to um, in the makeover of the Supermicro workstation which I use daily. So to start off from the beginning I have had for a period of over two years this Corsair 540 Air case which isn't the most attractive case but it is a brilliant case on the grounds that it's not that expensive and does have a dual chamber design so in essence if you can think of the, the, the case being split into two sections vertically, the motherboard is on one side and then there's a sort of partition and behind that partition on the right side are two media bays at the top, a space for power supply at the bottom um, and other various drives. So all your gubbins and wiring can go at the back here and then you have a clean sheet of metal down here and if we were to look from the inside on the glass panel from this side you see the motherboard and minimal, minimal, minimal wiring because it's all hidden here. So that was the original position and now we move to the new system again using the same Supermicro E80X motherboard which I've placed into this lovely Lian Li white 0, sorry, O11 dynamic case. So that's a Lian Li O11 dynamic case. Um, not to be confused with the much pricier all aluminium O11 case so this is a case that's about 120 GBP and the focus for this diagram is how on earth does this workstation power on? So, the workstation's got a number of monitors and due to various quirks I, I can't really go into um, it does have a little bit of a difficulty powering on. So one thing it's got at the, is, is a VGA screen, a small VGA screen on which the uh, count up, a, sort of a bias count up is made rather like old PS2s if, if anyone can remember the back so far. PS2's Model 80 had like a two digit LED on, on the front of the on, on the front chassis which counted up and as the operating system or the BIOS got through certain checkpoints it would write different numbers on that front panel so that you really know what what part of the boot process you're in. So in the same way I have a, a VGA screen um, off the back of that um, on the, off, the, off the back of this computer because there's a VGA on the motherboard and that shows the progress now when I switch the machine on or workstation on again through the rare situations which means that the workstation just won't boot at all and if the workstation secondary screen or in fact this is the tertiary screen third screen the VGA screen is, is, is not black and not counting up with numbers then I have to press the reset button so safe to say that on this computer system, I, I, I know I need a power button and a reset button. Um, it wasn't until late in the build process did I notice <laughs> this, this case doesn't have two buttons. It's only got one button. It's the power button. So I've made a few changes and it, it's also in line with the way that I wanted to, to have this workstation operate. So how does it work? So we've got the motherboard placed down here. We've got the power button on the front case actually connected to the reset on the on the motherboard. So if I, if at any time I was to press that power button, I, it would be pressing. It'd be like pressing the reset button. And if I, if there was an operating system loaded, you know the machine would just reboot, for, you know, uncleanly. So don't press that power button. Basically, once the operating system's up, now how does this? How does the workstation actually switch on? Well, I've got what's called a, an inching relay which is really an ESP8266 device, look it up, ESP8266. And what that has, it has actually a Wi-Fi connection, and I have a smartphone app through which I can control this. It's powered by a 5 volt USB rail, although some of these devices can be powered by 12 volt, but luckily for me it's 5 volt, it shows it this way, so I can just plug it via USB. So this guy is on all the time. It's connected to a, a, a 5 volt USB power rail which is never switched off. So in a steady state off situation I can use my smartphone to talk to this ESP8266 Wi-Fi device and send a pulsed short shorting. This has got two wires coming out of here. And these two wires go to the two wires of the power jumpers on the motherboard. So I just momentarily make a short here, which is what's called an inching relay. So the inching relay operates by just momentarily shorting these connections, and hence shorting the connections here. 
and that causes the, 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 the computer to power up. But only if, obviously, the, the, the computer's got power. So just clicking this on will not cause the box to, to turn on unless the power supply is active. And how is the power supply active? Well, I must previously have had to switch on the power to the PCU. Now the power to the PC the PSU plus the power to all sorts of other devices. In fact, there's a power brick here. There's a power brick here. And that goes to the VGA screen. That goes to monitor one. That goes to monitor two. That goes to the USB hub. So that that is a, a switched and filtered power brick. So what happens, happens, happens actually first is this is a, a, a plug which has been flushed with an operating system called Tasmota, which is quite well known in the home automation world. And through that device, I can connect. Uh, in fact, there's an Alexa skill, uh, which you so I could connect to it via, the, via an, uh, an Alexa voice command, or I can use a smartphone app, and I can actually tell Tasmota to, to switch the power on. So Tasmota switches the power on. The power goes to the power brick. That plugs in and switches on all the screens, the USB hub, the VGA monitor, and it, it switches on the PSU. But the machine won't power on, of course, until I've actually pressed the on button, and the on button is through this point. So switching on this computer is always a two-stage process, but can be done from anywhere in the world. First of all, I power on the power supply and any peripherals. Secondly, I use a different app, and I initiate the power sequence to the workstation. And that's it. So it may sound quite involved, but it works quite well. It means, for example, um, I might be lying in bed and I think, oh, well, I need to switch the workstation. I know that takes 10 minutes. I can go to my app, switch on the workstation, and by the time I've, I've, I've um, had a shave and, and so forth and just had a wash, the workstation will be up and running. So it works quite well, and I thought you'd be interested to see how, how that's, that's all worked out. But the, the most important thing in the makeover is, of course, the... Um, the change of case to the Lian Lee case. So I'm back to Lian Lee. Uh, it was it was nice uh, knowing your Corsair, but you really don't compare to Lian Lee in terms of the visuals or the quality of the build. So thanks for watching, Diary. I uh, hope you found that interesting. I'll speak to you again soon. Bye.